Welcome to the demo video of our Monthly Budget Plus spreadsheet. Our Monthly Budget Plus spreadsheet contains seven tabs. The first tab you'll find in the spreadsheet is a Start tab. In the Start tab, you'll be able to change your currency, add your own subcategories for income, savings, bills, expenses, and your debts. You can set up your savings and sinking funds and set up your debt snowball. The second tab you'll find is your Log tab. This is where you'll add all your transactions. The third tab is the budget tab. This is where you'll pick a month from the drop down menu and all your transactions that you've logged will be updated in your actual sections for you. The fourth tab you'll find is a calendar tab. The calendar tab is where all your bills and debt payments will be added to a calendar. So you'll easily be able to see when a bill or a debt payment is due. The fifth tab is the savings tab. This is where you can keep track of your savings and your sinking funds. In total, you can add up to 25 different savings or sinking funds. The sixth tab is a debt dashboard. This is where you can calculate your debt payoff plan using the debt snowball method. Basically, when you add your debt information in the start tab, all information will be updated here automatically for you. And you'll be able to see exactly for each debt what the monthly payment will be and when your debt will be paid off. The last tab that we've included is a bonus tab. This is a worksheet that will help you to focus on spending less and saving more. Now, before you start adding any information to your monthly budget, we highly recommend changing your subcategories in the start tab, as when you change them here, they will update everywhere. In addition to changing our subcategories, you can also change your currency here. You can do this by simply double clicking on the field, hitting the backspace button and typing a currency sign or abbreviation of your own. For example, when you use Euro, and you now go over to the different types of tabs, you'll be able to see that's been updated everywhere for you. Now let's go ahead and set up our spreadsheet together to have a little bit of a better idea of what a budget spreadsheet could look like. Now to replace a subcategory, all you have to do is double click on a field and type a subcategory of your own. For example, for income, we might have a paycheck. All the subcategories you don't need, you can simply delete for now and you can always add more later. If you would like to delete them all at once, simply click on the top button, hold shift on your keyboard and click on the bottom button and click the backspace button on your keyboard. This will delete all the pre-entered information at once. Now let's add some more subcategories. Now the next thing you can do is add your due dates. When you add your due date, you just basically add the day number of the month. So for example, if our rent is due on the 5th, our Netflix is due on the 10th of each month, internet is due on the 1st, water is due on the 1st and our phone plan is due on the 7th. When you add the day number, this will ensure that no matter if you change a month in the calendars. So for example, if we change it to September, the bills will always be added for you and you don't have to change the due dates every single month. When you're at your debts, be sure to add them from smallest to largest as that is necessary for the debt snowball to function properly. It might be easiest to just take a piece of paper, list all your debts by amount and then enter your debts here. So you don't have to redo this later. The next thing we're going to do is add our savings and sinking funds. Your savings and sinking funds will update automatically based on the savings subcategories that you set here. And then now for every subcategory you've entered, you can set a goal. So let's say we might want to save 10,000 for home renovation. We might want to save 5,000 for a car and another 15,000 for a wedding. You can now also enter a start amount. So for example, if you already saved 5,000 for your home renovation, a thousand for a car, and you've saved already seven and a half grand for your wedding, you'll be able to add this information here. You'll also be able to add a monthly contribution. So for example, if every month you set hundred dollars aside for your home renovation, you can enter this information here. And then in your savings dashboard, it will show you how many more months it will take until you reach your goal. Now, the next thing where we're gonna set up is our debt snowball. To set up our debt snowball, we're going to pick the date first where we're going to start paying off our debt. So for example, it's currently October and you want to start paying off debt as of the 1st of November. You simple double click on the field for the calendar to pop up and then you change it to the 1st of November. Now, in addition to your debt and your minimum amounts and your interest rate, you can also add a monthly extra. The first thing we're going to do is add the amount for every single debt that we have. So for example, if on the first credit card we own a thousand, we have 5,000 on a student loan and we own 7,500 on our second credit card. And we simply enter this information here. Now for each, we're going to add the minimum payment and we're also going to add the interest rate. Now on the bottom here, we'll be able to see that in total, we have $13,500 worth of debt and our total minimum payments is $300. 
Now, if in your budget you have some extra money available every month that you would like to pay towards your debt on top of the minimum payments, you can add that monthly extra here. So let's say, for example, you've set aside $500 every month that you put towards your debts. You simply add the extra $200 here. In addition, you can also add a start extra amount. So, for example, if you've set some money aside or you have some savings and you would like to jumpstart the debt payoff process and you would like to basically get rid of the $1,000 as quickly as possible and you have an extra $250 available for that first payment, you can add that here. This is, of course, completely optional and you don't have to enter anything here. Now, in addition to having an option to add bills, we've also added a section where you can add monthly subscriptions. We have basically done this because we've noticed a lot of people have more than 25 bills and it might be easy to list some of your subscriptions that automatically get taken out of your account every month anyway, like Netflix, Spotify, Amazon Prime, all under one subcategory of subscriptions here in the bottom. So that this way you have a little bit of extra space for bills in your bill section. So, but when you add subscriptions here, so let's say for example, you pay every month for Spotify and Amazon Prime, and the amount is $9 and $10. The total that you'll see here, the $19, when you go to your budget, it automatically gets added to your planned amount for you here. So this way you only have to lock the actual amount for it to show up, but you don't have to lock every single subscription individually in the bill section. So now that you've set up your start tab and you've entered all your information, let's head over to the budget tab so we can enter our budget. Now all the actuals, will actually update automatically for you. So you don't have to add any information here. Basically, all you have to enter in your budget tab is your planned amount. The planned sections have been added so you can start budgeting for your money before you actually receive it or spend it and compare your plans to your actual expenses. So for example, if you expect for the month of October to receive $2,500 in paychecks, you expect to roughly get about $100 worth of gifts, $500 worth of bonuses, $1,000 off freelance, and you get another $500 in child support, you'll now be able to see that you have $4,600 available of income that you can allocate between your savings, bills, expenses, and debts. You'll also be able to see how exactly how much there's left to budget. So now, for example, if this month you want to set $500 aside for home renovation, $100 for your car, and $50 for your wedding, you'll see that this planned amount updates automatically over here, as well as in the bottom over here. And like I said, you don't have to update the actual amounts. Once you start adding transactions, these will update automatically for you, so you don't have to do the calculations yourself. Now, let's add some fictional amounts. And it's just for the sake of having a look at what the budget would look like. And then let's add some transactions to see what this will do to our budget. Based on the information we've entered now, you'll be able to see that there's $1 that you have left to budget for, basically. So now that we've added our planned amounts, let's head over to the lock tab and actually start adding some transactions. So it is currently the month of October and we have spent some money on buying things this month. For example, we spent $150, we spent $50, and we spent another $75. Now, the first expense that we made was for some food. We spent $50 on bills towards internet, and we've also spent $75 on our student loan. Now that we head over to our budget, we'll be able to see that our actual expenses have been added here for us. Now, the budget tab is designed in a way that will only show the transactions for the month you've selected. This will allow you to keep on using this budget for as many months as you need and all you have to do is basically click on this little arrow and click on the duplicate button. When you click on the duplicate button, everything in the budget will stay the same. The only thing that will change is basically when you change the month, the actuals will only show for the month you've selected. You can adjust the different planned amounts to play around with it as in certain months. For example, rent might be higher or your internet bill might be higher and your actual amounts will update for you as long as you add your transactions to the lock tab. So now that we had a better look at our budget tab, let's look at our calendar. Our calendar tab updates automatically for you. So when you enter your information in the start tab, your bills and their due dates will be added to the calendar for you. All you have to do is basically select a month from the drop down menu and then select if you either want a start date of Monday or Sunday. You also be able to change the year here, of course, to make sure you get actually get the right calendar dates to match the dates of the week. Now, also this tab, you can duplicate as many times as needed as you might like to keep a record of if you have paid your bills and your debt payments. 
Basically, to do this, you can do it the exact same way as with the budget. You just click on the little arrow and click duplicate. Now, it might be good to know that while the calendar updates automatically for you, the paid boxes do not update when you change the month. So, for example, if we paid all our bills in October and we now want to have a look at our bills for November, when we change the month, the, the calendar updates, the title updates, but the boxes will still show as paid. Now, you can deselect these buttons all in one click. So for example, when you click the top button, hold shift on your keyboard and then click the bottom button. Now just hit the space bar on your keyboard and they will deselect or select all at once. But it might be easiest to create a new calendar for every single month to make sure that you don't accidentally switch the months over to, for example, December and two of your bills had already been marked as paid and now you forget to pay these bills. So now that we've had a better look at our calendar tab, let's look at our next step, the savings tab. The savings tab now has the information that you've entered in the start tab pre-filled for you. Now, when you start adding transactions in your log tab, now let's say for example that on the 5th of October, you put $500 towards your savings, home renovation. Now, when you go to the savings tab, you'll be able to see that your balance is 5,500. You started out with 5,000, you saved 500, so your total balance is $5,500. As your monthly contribution is roughly $100 a month, it will still take you 45 months to reach your goal. On the top, you'll also be able to see your total goal, which is the total of all your savings. You'll be able to see how much you set aside every month towards your savings. You'll also be able to see how much you've saved in total already and how much there's still left to save to reach your goal. And that is the savings tab. Now the debt tab, if you've entered all your information in the start tab, it will automatically be updated here for you. Now, you'll be able to view each single debt individually over here, but we've tried to make it a little bit easier by adding an overview on the left here where you can see exactly how much you need to pay towards each debt every month, how much there's left to pay, and what the balance will be after you've made your payments. So as we start in November 2022, when we now select this month, we'll be able to see that towards our first credit card, we're going to pay $550.00. We haven't paid anything towards it yet, so there's still $550 left to pay, and the balance is $450 after our payment. So now let's say it is November, and we make a payment towards our first debt. So it is the 7th of November, and we pay $150 towards our first credit card. Now when you go over to the debt tab, you'll be able to see that you needed to pay $550, and as you already paid $150, there's still $400 left to pay. Basically, we added this overview section so we'll be able to make multiple payments each month and easily be able to see how much there's left to pay so you always make sure you make the payments that you have plans. Now, there's no option to pay less, but there is an option to pay more. So let's say, for example, it is the 19th of November and you want to put another $700 towards that first debt because you might have received a bonus or a gift and you're like, let's get rid of this debt. Now, when you get over to the debt tab, you'll now be able to see you've actually paid $850 towards that first debt. There's now nothing left to pay and the balance will now be $150 after you've made that payment. When you add a payment that is higher than the planned payment, everything else in the spreadsheet will automatically update for you. So you'll be able to see that the date that the debt is paid off will update for you, as well as the balances and the payments towards all the other debts as well. Now we've added this section so you don't have to scroll through all the debts to find how much you need to pay towards each debt because it can get quite a lot with the 25 debts that you can add. But if you want, you are able to view all the debts individually and see exactly what the payments and the balances will look like. Now in addition, we have added a little overview on the left here that will show you the total amount of debt that there will be left at the end of each month. And that is it. That's basically everything you need to know about our monthly budget spreadsheet. If you have any other questions, do not hesitate to send us a message. I'll leave some contact information in the description box down below. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.